going to study about different patterns of periosteal bone reactions. Periosteal reaction is also known as periosteal neostosis. I have already discussed about basic structure of a bone while I was explaining about osteomyelitis. If you want to have a look at that video, kindly have a look. Now let's see this diagram. Cortical bone is lined by periosteum on its outer surface and endosteum on its inner surface. Now this periosteum can be lifted up or elevated from the surface of cortical bone because of the irritation from inflammatory or neoplastic processes. This irritated and lifted up periosteum can lay down new bone, new fresh bone just beneath it, just beneath the periosteum new bone is deposited. That's why it is called as subperiosteal new bone. And this subperiosteal new bone can be deposited in different patterns. These periosteal reactions can be well appreciated on low exposure occlusal view, reverse stone and posterior anterior views. Periosteum can deposit bone at different patterns when it is getting irritated. It may be in a continuous pattern or it may be in a discontinuous or interrupted pattern or it may be a combination of both continuous and discontinuous pattern that is known as complex pattern. Under continuous pattern following these types of periosteal reactions are there single lamellar periosteal reaction, multilamellar periosteal reaction, solid periosteal reaction, speculated periosteal reaction. Speculated periosteal reaction has following patterns. Haronin pattern, sunburst or sunray pattern, spicules of irregular pattern and finally it has velvet pattern. Under discontinuous or interrupted periosteal reaction, two types of periosteal reactions are there. The first type is Cortman triangle and the second type is buttress bone deposition. In single lamellar periosteal reaction, a single layer of bone is deposited just beneath the periosteum. So this green color line is the elevated periosteum. Just below this green color line, we have one red dotted line. So this is the deposited subperiosteal bone. And this subperiosteal bone is very thin. It is about 1 to 2 millimeter in width. And it is seen radiographically as a faint radio opaque line. Best examples of single lamellar periosteal reaction includes osteomyelitis, histiocytosis. In multilamellar periosteal reaction, multiple parallel layers of bone are deposited just beneath a periosteum. Number of these layers may vary from several to a maximum of about 12. This multilamellar periosteal reaction occurs as a result of acute periodic cyclic exacerbations of underlying pathology after it is entering into a chronic phase. Best example of multilamellar periosteal reaction is chronic osteomyelitis. In acute osteomyelitis, the type of periosteal reaction is single lamellar periosteal reaction. As the lesion develops into a more chronic phase, cyclic periodic acute exacerbations may produce more inflammatory exudate which again lifts the periosteum from the underlying bone surface and stimulates the periosteum to form a second layer of bone which is seen parallel to the first layer of bone. This process may continue and may result in several layers of bone deposition and this pattern is known as onion skin appearance. Multilamellar periosteal reaction can also be noted in Ewing sarcoma, osteosarcoma and chondrosarcoma. Solid periosteal reaction is a non-aggressive periosteal reaction with slow continuous bone formation. The matrix between these numerous lamellations ossifies as the insult continues, resulting in solid periosteal reaction. This solid periosteal reaction is also known as cortical thickening or hyperostosis because it is characterized by marked thickening of the periosteal surface of the cortical bone. Radiographically smooth dense radio opacity is noted on the periosteal surface of the cortical bone. If the bone deposition is irregular then it is called as untulating solid periosteal reaction. In untulating solid periosteal reaction 
bone is deposited in a wave like fashion example of undulating solid periosteal reaction is osteomyelitis examples of solid periosteal reaction includes osteoderma and eosinophilic granuloma spiculated periosteal reaction is a aggressive periosteal reaction it represents a more rapid process of underlying pathology and these bony spicules originate from ossification of sharpies fibers sharpies fibers or tiny fibers which connect the periosteum to the bone and these fibers become stretched out perpendicular to the bone as a result of underlying pathological condition bony spicules are produced as a result of ossification of these sharpies fibers bony spicules are short and thick in case of benign conditions and they are long and slender in case of malignant conditions in hair on end pattern these bony spicules are arranged parallel to each other hair on end appearance is seen in osteosarcoma ewing sarcoma sickle cell anemia and thalassemia in sunray or sunburst pattern these bony spicules are divergent in nature and this pattern is mostly noted in osteosarcoma chondrosarcoma fibrosarcoma ewing sarcoma osteoblastoma hemangioma in this particular pattern spicules are seen in an unorganized manner they are seen in various directions and these irregular spicules can be noted in ewing sarcoma and osteosarcoma in velvet pattern spicules are uniform fine short sloped with a gradual reduction in the height in each direction from the mid zone region of the reaction example for velvet pattern is osteosarcoma cartman's triangle is highly suggestive of bone sarcoma tumor is growing too fastly and it breaks off the part of the periosteum only the periosteum near the margin of the lesion has time to ossify center of the lesion does not show any ossification we can appreciate a triangular shaped area of subperiosteal bone near the margin of the lesion this formation is seen in slow growing benign lesions this is characterized by break in the periosteum and beak like solid periosteal newborn formation this buttressing bone formation is considered as an interrupted version of solid periosteal reaction example for buttress formation is ameloblastoma complex periosteal reaction comprises of different types or different patterns of continuous and discontinuous periosteal reaction when the biological activity of underlying pathology is so extensive we may expect the presence of complex periosteal reaction coexistence of both benign and malignant processes as a result of secondary infection can also produce as complex periosteal reaction so these are all the examples for complex periosteal reaction leukemia lymphoma osteosarcoma